Hello and welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to discuss about the basics of SketchUp. This is the first part out of a free series video that will show you how to design your very own digital products. And as a bonus, a fun fact. Did you know that in 1971, the iconic Nike logo was designed by a student named Carolyn Davidson and she only got $35 for it. I wonder what she did with all that money. Okay, so before we start, I just want to mention that Sketch is only one out of three options that you have as a UI designer to create user interfaces. Besides this, you still have Adobe XD and Figma. But the main reason I picked Sketch is because in my opinion, it provides the best user experience for you to learn these tools. But if you're interested in Figma or in Adobe XD, don't worry about it because I'm going to cover those in later videos for you. Okay, so before we jump in, you need to download Sketch for Mac. Unfortunately, Sketch is only working for Mac for now. That's why I said that we have different alternatives like Adobe XD and Figma, but we will cover those in later videos. But let's download Sketch now. So in order to do that, just head over to sketch.com. You have the link in the description and go to the try for free button here. And then afterwards, just download it from download the Mac app trial. Once it's downloaded, just double click on the zip file and double click on the DMG file, install the app and you're ready to go. Great, so now that we have everything set up, let's run Sketch. After we click the icon, you will be immediately greeted by this pop-up screen. So here, just go ahead and tap new document. At first glance, the interface might seem a bit overwhelming, but trust me, once you know the structure, you will find it very simple. Let's start from the right side. In this column, you will find all the elements that you create in this document. From here, you will be able to group, rename and organize all your designs. We will come back to this column once we create some elements so then I can show you exactly how it works. On the top, the only thing we will need to cover from now is this big plus button on the left. If you click on it, you will see that here you will find the basic shapes that you will need to start designing, a vector tool that would allow you to create custom shapes like waves or other more abstract shapes, or a pencil which you will never use, trust me, it's like just useless. A text tool, an image tool that again nobody is using because we can just drag and drop our images directly into the software and lastly we have the artboards this is our canvas without this we cannot create any designs the rest we don't need to worry about them right now as we will cover these in a later video when we will start creating prototypes and more complex things now let's go ahead and create an artboard after we click we have two options one we can just drag and create a custom sized artboard or if we delete this one and if you go back to the artboard, if you click on it, we can create one from the left panel and select the standardized one, which I always recommend doing. So go ahead and select the desktop HD one. Once we have created the artboard, we can zoom in by using either our command and plus the wheel button, or you can just use the pinch zoom out or zoom in with the trackpad if you're, that's what you're using. Okay, so now that we have our artboard, let's create our first shape. So if you go back here to the plus button, and we select shape, rectangle. We can either create the rectangle by selecting this or we can actually use R to quickly select the rectangle and then afterwards draw it on our R board. But now let's just click on this and create a rectangle. After creating the shape, you will see that on the left side, our column will be populated with some information. In this column, we will have all the functionalities that will allow us to align and customize any shape we create. On the top part, we have the alignment options alongside with the width, height, and rotation of the element. We also have the X and the Y axis coordinates for when our shape is positioned inside the artboard, but don't worry about it. No one is using it and probably you won't use it either. As you can see, there's a lot of things that you won't be using, you see? Easy. Next, we have the radius. And as the name states, this will add the radius to your shape's corner. So if you want to round the corners of your shape, this is the place where you have to go. As you can see, when I drag it, it's just like adding a radius to my shape. We're going to ignore prototyping for now in appearance and styles, just because we're gonna cover those in later videos. So for now, don't worry about it. The next stop is fills and borders. And as the name suggests, 
From here you can change the color of your shape and the borders. To change the color you just click on the color rectangle and use the color picker to select any color you want. And then afterwards from here you can actually change the transparency as well. Once you have the desired color just click on the box again and it will close and you will see on the right side that you have the opacity that you've selected in the color picker. Also if you want to add like a random photo you can use this icon here and if you click on it just go to unsplash and random photo and just wait a second and that will add like a random photo. This is good when you're prototyping or you don't want to have like a specific image and you do just want something like a placeholder. This is the perfect thing to do. But for now, let's just undo this and leave our shape as it was. Same thing goes for borders. If you want to change the color, just go here, select the color picker, exactly the same as fill. Just select here, you have the transparency as well. Once you have the desired color, just click on it. And then afterwards, if you want to change the width of the actual border, you can change it here. So if you want this to have, for example, 10 pixels, then add 10 pixels here and then afterwards click enter and you will see that the border now is 10 pixels in width. And also you can change it from being on inside, in the center or outside. But personally, I recommend only using either inside or outside because if you use it in the center, it kind of like if you have uh, round numbers that it's fine, but if you have like uneven numbers, then you'll have like half a pixel inside and half a pixel outside or two pixels inside and three outside. So that will be very hard to line afterwards with all the other elements. Afterwards, we have the shadows, which we can add by simply clicking this plus button. And same as for the fill and uh, the borders, we can actually change the colors and we can go inside, change the color and transparency. And as you can see, the more I click on the plus, the more shadows I add, so you can add multiple layers. Personally, I don't recommend doing this. One shadow is more than enough, but you have the option if you want to. So if you want to remove this, just simply click on them and just drag them outside and you will have this animation that they just disappear. It's actually a nice animation. And also here you can actually change the position of the shadow. So the on the X axis and on the Y axis and also the blur. So if you have, if you want like a different blur, for example, the pixels, that will change and it will make your shadow a bit more soft. Afterwards, we have the inner shadow, which we can add exactly the same as the shadows, fills or borders just by clicking on this plus sign. And then we can change the color. Same thing. If you, do, if you don't have the color picker, just click on this uh, icon here, like this arrow. Same thing. Just select whatever color you want transparency again same user experience and then you have the x and the y axis and the blur exactly as you have for the shadow for the inner shadow as well and lastly we have the blur which you, you can use either to blur some images or to blur the actual shape so if you want to add blur just click on this and then afterwards you will see that here you can control the amount of blur you want to add to the specific object. But for now, we will keep it at zero just because we don't need it right now. And this is it. These are all the tools you will need to be able to start designing. If you know this, you are already on your way to become a UI designer. Now let's create some shapes so I can show you how you can group and organize the elements on the left panel. Let me show you how quickly you can create a subscribe pop-up that you can later on use in your videos as an animation. For that, we will need to first delete this one and then afterwards add two rectangles because we will need two rectangles for it. We can either draw two of them or we can just copy and paste them. So now we have two. Then we will need a circle, which we're going to do that. To create a circle, just click, uh, hold click the shift and then afterwards drag. And this will create like a circle because if you don't hold shift, that will create like an ellipse and we don't want to do that. And next we need some text, just drag and drop some text. So yeah, these are all the elements that we need to create the subscribe pop-up. So now let's start designing and see exactly what we're going to do. So first we're going to select the shape and this will be like the background for our pop-up. So let's say that I want this to be 900 pixels in width and let's say 200 in height. Okay, so we have that. We can add some corners to it. Oh, first I need to select this. Let's add some corners. Okay, probably 20 pixel. Yeah, that should be enough. Then afterwards, let's remove the border and change the co color to uh, white. But now we cannot see anything. So the trick is to add some shadow. 
Okay, and now that we have the shadow, let's change the blur to, let's say, 10. So now it's even across our shape. And then afterwards, change this to a lighter gray. And I think that looks pretty good for now. Cool. So now we have the background. Now let's create the subscribe button. So for that, we need the other rectangle and we have to make this a bit smaller because it's too big. Let's say 250 pixels. And then afterwards, let's have 80 pixels. Okay, this looks pretty okay. And then afterwards, let's change the color and the fill this button to your red. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the exact red for YouTube, but hopefully. Okay, I'm happy with that. Then afterwards, let's remove the border and let's change the radius to this as well to a 10 and let's see how it looks. Okay, that looks good. Now we have the text. So we're gonna place this on top, change the color to white. Let's change the weight of this to bold and let's write subscribe. Okay, let's drag this. Oh yeah, and now let's center it. And to center it, what we do? We just select the two elements and then afterwards using the top thing here, like the top panel, we just align the text with the actual shape. So you, with the align tool, you can either align the shape inside the artboard or you can just align two shapes that you have selected. Okay, now that we have this, probably make this a bit bigger. 21 pixels, that's too big. Let's put it at 16, 18. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's center it again. Oh, so now we have the subscribe button. Cool. Now we have the actual circle and we're gonna put this and using the magic of fill that I showed you before, we're just gonna go here, click on unsplash and then afterwards just add a random image let's see okay that's actually a good image i'm surprised and lastly we'll need to add some text just to show our channel name and then afterwards underneath probably a short description of what our channel is all about so for that we can either go back to text here or we can just duplicate the one that we have but we're gonna go and create the new one and after we created this now it's white so we need to change this to let's see a dark gray and let's type here the name of the channel Let's just duplicate this using Control C plus Control V, drag it underneath, and then afterwards here, and then change this to, let's say, design and business. Okay, and now let's change this to a bold, and let's make it a bit bigger, 24 sounds good. And this, let's make it 16, and let's make it regular. Okay, cool, that looks good. So we just bring these two together. By holding shift, we can select both of them and then afterwards we can drag them here. And this looks good, right? It looks good. The thing is like now we have all the elements on the left side. So we can see exactly all the elements that we have on the artboard. Now, let's say for example, that we want to design something on top of this and we want to move everything down. If I go on the artboard and if I click on the box and drag it you see that i can only drag one element at a time so to fix this we will need to group our elements and how do we do that so for example let's start with the button okay so we want to group these two elements so the way to do it it's either by holding shift and selecting both elements and then afterwards right clicking and selecting group selection or we can just simply use command g and this will create a group for us. And on the left panel, you will see that a group was created. Now, just to be organized, let's rename the group to subscribe button. Okay, and then let's rename this rectangle to button background. Okay, so now we have the button grouped. Now let's group these elements as well. Same thing, holding shift, we can select all of them or if you want, we you can actually select them here using the same technique, holding shift and then afterwards selecting all of them. Command G, you create a group 
and we can call this profile. And then we can rename the background as being the pop-up. Background. And that's it. Now we have everything grouped. But again, if we want to move this, these are still separate. So if we want to put everything together, what we will need to do now is just select everything and just group them. And that's it. Now we have our element, so we can rename this as being our pop up uh, YouTube, let's call it. And there you have it. This is everything you need to know to start designing in Sketch. And that's it, you're officially a UI designer. Give yourself a pat on the back. And now that you know the basics in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create your first website landing page and it will look awesome. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.